Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He plants trees with Bette Midler, swims with kids in magnificent pools, unveils dog fountains, canoes the Bronx River, and oversees 29,000 acres of New York City real estate. He's got the life. But then there's Union Square, Washington Square, Randall's Island, and Yankee Stadium, too. He's Adrian Benepe, New York City Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, and he's here to talk about trees, parks, pools, and to discuss the programs, prospects, problems, and politics facing New York City parks. Welcome back, Adrian. It's been a long time. It's been too long, Doug. Okay. You've got the best job in the city, and you've got a job that must produce a lot of agita. Demanding job. Talk about the, the, the trials and tribulations of the Parks Commissioner. Well, it's, there's no question it's the best job in the city, though sometimes you say you're playing right field for the Yankees, conducting the Metropolitan Opera. Uh, I can't play baseball, and I can't read music. So those Well, are come right. on. Yeah. But you can act well. <laughs> but, uh, no, it is a great job. It's, it's a, it would be a great job under any circumstances, but to be in this job with a guy like Mayor Bloomberg as mayor, who, for the first, I think, time in the history of the city, truly understands parks and their importance. Talk about That's that before thing. we get into the tribulations, then. Talk about the, the triumphs, if you will. Well, it's uh, Mayor Bloomberg, and not just Mayor Bloomberg, but the whole senior cabinet, Patty Harris, who's the deputy mayor, I report to Dan Doctroff, when he was there, now Bob Lieber. For the first time, we think of the city's history, there was an understanding that parks are not just an amenity you do when you take care of everything else, and also the first thing to cut, that parks are essential to quality of life, mm -hmm that they uh, convey a lot of value, that if you have a good park that's well-built and well-maintained and safe, people want to live there, invest, reinvest, open businesses, so that there's, um, as a result of that, that, that sort of deep understanding, there's more money that's being invested in parks now than at any time in the city's history, because if you go back to the 1930s, that money was federal money, you know, with somebody else's right. money we were playing right. with. This is city tax dollars that's going to this. We have $3 billion in our capital budget, $3 billion. Our, our expense budget is $400 million. That doesn't include the private money that's coming in, which is about $100 million a year. We spend a billion dollars a year, $1 billion a year is what we spend on parks. It's, you know, it's the biggest park uh, expense budget in any city in the, in the world, probably. And uh, as a result, every neighborhood you look in, parks are being rebuilt. Parks are being built at a greater and, and faster level than any time since the Great Depression. And in... And in Part the success, this massive building, is part of your problem, if you will, because the sheer number of projects and the, the scope of these projects are obviously going to stimulate all kinds of conflict because parks, as you know, and you've said it, they're New Yorkers' common backyard, right. and New Yorkers have hold opinions on the parks, and they verbalize them, and, and sometimes they litigate them. That's the perfect storm, because most New Yorkers don't have a backyard. And people come up to me all the time and say, I can't tell you how I depend upon this park. It mm -hmm. makes my life. A guy just told me last night, he said he moved back, he, he moved out of the city and moved back because he didn't have Central Park. He moved back for Central Park. And that happens all across. It's all the neighborhood parks. And Unlike, say, building a bridge or a sewage treatment plant, let's say I go forward, I'm on the DEP commissioner, I'm going to build a sewage treatment plant. It may be a little bit controversial where mm -hmm. you're building it, but no one's going to question how. They're not going to say, well, this pipe should go there, that pipe should go there. Only engineers know that. Right. When it comes to designing a park, everyone's an expert. Right. The path can go left or go right. It can be uh, sports or passive. It can be roses or tulips. Or you can have the fountain here, or you or can have, have the fountain, fountain there, or you can have, we a, have a cafe there. or no cafe. Right. And all the opinions are valid. And um, New Yorkers, as you say, are not shy about expressing their opinions. And even if 99% of the people are for you, which they mostly are, there's always somebody who's against something. And the, the good news is that we're building in every neighborhood. What makes it difficult at times is that everybody has an opinion. And this, the common refrain is, you didn't consult us. What that means is, I don't agree with what you're doing. Because we consult like crazy. We have the, probably the most consultative process ever in the city's history. 
you guys are in court a lot. There's a lot of litigation around the parks, and you, you guys generally, your batting average is pretty good in this litigation, but you're in court constantly. Well, you know, it's, uh, we, we go through the process, we do the environmental impact statements, we go to the community board, we go to the landmarks, we go to the art commission, we go to the, the local elected officials, and then still someone sues you. That's the beauty of America and New York City is we've got courts and lawyers. And uh, we, we've got a great, the law department has some terrific lawyers working for it. And uh, we have a very good batting average. We, we may get sued five times as we did in Washington Square, but we won all five times because we, have, we, we did the process correctly. Most people support it and the lawyers defend us. But the problem is, though, that it, it can slow things down right. and it costs the city money. That's tax dollars. If you delay a project two years, you've increased your costs 30 percent because Construction of Construction costs are yes. up and then, then you've got the, essentially the legal fees as well, but they're minor in terms of the opportunity cost of lost yes. time. And plus, you're, you're shutting down the park while this is happening. You know, if you stop a project, it means the playground won't open for a few years. So. Okay, let's just talk about a couple of these hot spots, sure. if you will. Washington Square Park, what's the status of that? Well, construction is going on. It's about a $20 million project for the first phase. Uh, it's going well as we thankfully won all the lawsuits. We expect to be able to open the first series of paths by this fall. And uh, basically, the, the main intent of the project was to sort of undo some of the damage that was done over the years. And around 1970, a lot got, they closed the roads that yep. were ready for the park. Yep. They just left a lot of pavement. Yep. There's a lot of excess I was pavements. in NYU at grad yeah. school at the time. They're basically streets. They left the streets yep. there, essentially. Yep. So what we're doing is reducing the paving and making the park 20% greener. Wow. While we're doing that, we're just moving the fountain over a little bit to center it on the arch. Why move the fountain? I mean, I understand, in a sense, the right. visual aesthetic of it, but it's off center and it was wonderful where it was because the uh we have to take the fountain completely apart anyway to restore it it's okay. totally falling to the ground okay. so you figured as long as we're taking it apart we might as well center it so you see it as you come okay. down fifth avenue okay we suspect that if stanford white had his way the fountain would have been there in the first place the only reason it's off center is because you used to have three streets running through the park running through the park uh, I didn't it was realize. in between one of the two streets okay because fifth avenue came down and then forked out oh i didn't realize that. oh yeah so it, it forked out into three separate streets in between two of the streets was a fountain it couldn't be in the middle because okay. there's a street in the middle i get it yeah. i get it what else what else what else can i expect in washington square park well, it, you know, here's the funny thing. We get all this uh, you know, agita when you build a park, this, that, the other thing. It opens, and they line up to get in. Uh, they're having an Abingdon Square. They fought right. us for years about Abingdon right. Square. Which is a great small park. Now it's a great park. small park. That's what Benches, reading, and, and wonderful. It, we, it was all asphalt before. We made it green. Mm -hmm. Somebody sued us, as they said. We prefer it to be asphalt. <laughs> you can't believe you this. You can't wait. Well, it's New York. Come on, Adrian. But then what happens is you build a park, and everybody says, wait a second. What, what were we fighting about before? Why was I against having a Green Park. Okay, let's yeah. go to Union Square restaurant. What's what's the issue here? What's the likely resolution? Well, the uh, again, the Union Square project approved resoundingly by the community board, by the local elected officials, the, lo the local business improvement district. We got some private money in, a lot of public money. Three basic things. One is there's been a restaurant in the park for 14 years, mm -hmm. the Luna Cap Park right. Cafe. It's outdoors. Right. We're taking the restaurant away from the indoor space. On the northern on the end outdoors. of the park. Yes. It's just next to the pavilion. We're taking right. the restaurant away so we can triple the size of the playground. We're going to go from 5,000 square feet of playground to 15,000 mm -hmm. square feet of playground. Why? The neighborhood has turned residential. Right. And we Dramatically got, so. They're, the, they're crawling out of the playgrounds. It's so crowded. So we're going to make a much bigger playground. We're going to restore the North Plaza so the Green Market has a nice place to set up with power and water for the, for the farmers. And we're going to restore that old historic pavilion. The hope is to have a seasonal cafe inside the pavilion, which has been closed to the uh -huh. public for 30 or 40 right. years. So right. take space that's never been used before, give it a public use. What's the problem? <laughs> Go ahead. What's the problem? You know, it's everything you do, there's going to be one or two people who are opposed to it. You know, some people are is just... That, is, that, is that really the extent that's, of the that's, opposition? That's the extent of it. And if you even talk to... The, some people say, well, you shouldn't have a restaurant in the park because there's restaurants in the neighborhood. Well, the people don't remember what Union Square used to be like. I, I remember, because when I went to Baruch yeah. in 1980, that park was a very different park. You talk about Bloomberg, but really, the parks began to dramatically change during Giuliani and Well, it, and, it and actually goes back, goes back to and Ed Koch. Koch. It goes back right. to Ed Koch, Gordon Davis, right. and Henry Stern. Exactly. There's been yes. 25 years of improvement. Yeah, that's, that's I'm true. I'm just riding. It's like the big wave is coming. I'm riding the crest of it, because my, my predecessors... Uh, Henry Stern, Gordon Davis, Betsy Gottbaum, they right. all built to this right. point. Right, right. And Union Square Park was horrible. It was an no man's and, land. And, 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 yeah. and Madison Square yeah. Park was the same. Now, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching the parks. Obviously, I think uh, uh, Union Square Park and certainly Madison Park begins to rival some of the parks in London. You've got better. more flowers. Yeah. I mean, you've got yeah. flowers all over the city, particularly in those Manhattan parks. Well, also in the Bronx and in Queens and Brooklyn, one of the things I've done is uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of flowers and gardeners. We've tripled the number of gardeners in the parks departments. We used to, when I came into the parks department, there were probably 15 or 20 gardeners, the old civil service guys, the Italian guys who were getting ready to retire. Sure. And we've brought gardening back as a major part. We train all of our staff in, in basic horticulture. We have the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, runs a master garden training program. Fabulous facility. Flowers are, are inexpensive ways to make people feel it's, better about the environment. It's we've just got, wonderful. There's more flowers in New York City than at any time in its history right now because of the community gardens and the green streets that Henry Stern started. And, and all the business improvement districts, everyone's planting flowers. Well, I mean, beautiful. the intersection of 6th and Broadway, that, that yeah. park is now, it's run by the... Herald uh, Square. And Herald Square, Square Business yeah. Improvement District. Yes. It's fabulous. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice place to visit. So the quality of life, particularly when the parks, has has increased dramatically. Okay, yeah. let's, let's go to one more sore spot, yeah. two more, and then we'll move on. Randall's Island. Great, Sports field. Great deal for the city. Here's the story. Randall's Island uh, was... Three islands were combined in the 1930s by Robert Moses, right. of course. A lot of what we do is on the shoulders of Robert Moses right. when he built the Triborough Bridge. The park was never really complete. It had a bunch of ball fields. It had the old Downing Stadium, yeah. and it wasn't in very good shape. And the only people who were using it after school for several decades were the private schools because right. they could get out there, and they didn't have fields of their own. And let's remember, you know, people like to denigrate the private schools. The parents who are sending their kids to private schools, they're paying for taxes, they, they deserve some services, too. Their, okay. their kids are allowed to use the fields. They're paying taxes, but they're not collecting. They're not sending their kids to public school. So they, they formed a partnership and then helped to create the uh, Randall's Island Sports right. Foundation, which is like the Central Park Conservancy of Randall's Island. They came up with a plan to restore, not just to restore the fields, but to double the number of fields, to go from about 30 fields to about 60 fields. The private schools are paying for half of that. So it's about a $100 million project. They're paying $50 million. And they're getting access to it. That well, isn't what, that the conflict? They're getting, what it, so they said, we need some kind of assurance that we, we give you this money right. and you get we, some you'll get kicked out. Right. That at least we can stay. So the law department felt they should do it as a, con the only con construct they could come up that would work legally is they, they called it a concession. But it's not really a concession. Right. So we did this. And it's a great deal because... 85% of the users are not the private schools, the prime time users, the weekends, the summers. It's neighborhood softball leagues, it's little leagues, the Randall's Island kids, mm -hmm. they, they run a kids program. So this is a great deal for the city. Half the cost is, is provided by the private schools. They use it just a few hours after school on, during the summer and fall, and the rest of the time it's a What's the field. legal status? This is another one that was in the courts. You know, if the construction continues, it's still in the courts, okay. uh, it will play out. Okay. Yeah. Last one, Yankee Stadium. The park land that was meant to replace the park land yes. that's now being used to build a new stadium, construction costs are up. What's a difficulty in assembling it? Well, it's, the, it's a big project. Um, we're going to be replacing and then some all the parkland being lost by much better facilities. Okay. So we're, we're going to, where the old Yankee Stadium is now standing, we're going to tear it down and put three grass baseball fields. Oh, God. It's, the, it's like tearing <laughs> down the Coliseum. Adrian, how can you do this? Go ahead. I'm we, sorry. We can't have an it's empty God. I, know, I, know. I know, I know, I know. You know, but the stadium got very changed in the 1970s. It I really know, and, and it's not as good, but still, yeah. I mean, Babe Ruth stood we're there. We're going to try to save a few. We're going to save the outlines of it, maybe a few okay. pieces. Okay, okay, okay. Then I'm, we're going to build upset, the, the soccer. We're going to the soccer field, the running track. We're going to have a beautiful waterfront park. There's no waterfront access right, right. now. We're right, right. a beautiful waterfront park with picnic grounds and tennis courts and a, a, a big oh, park house. I want to see all this. So we're going to have about a a six acre net gain in park space uh -huh. when it's all over. Okay. But that said, I completely understand people being upset about the inconvenience while this is happening. Yeah. You know, and that's the, that's one of the problems working in New York City. There's no virgin land to build new right. parks on. Right. Something's got to give. It's always a, it's one of those gains where you have to move the squares around. There's mm -hmm. one empty square, but there aren't six empty squares. Right. And that's there's always an inconvenience when you're you know when they built subway lines through Central Park that was an inconvenience when they put the, the Silver Lake Reservoir in no, right. that was an inconvenience right. but right. that's unfortunately that's life in the big city we're going to try to make it up to the neighborhood by having really great parks when they're done okay let's talk about the agenda i mean the, it seems that you've got a threefold agenda one is the trees this right. million 
uh, planting of trees, part of the Plan YC program. Also, you're doing a lot of large-scale park improvements as well as construction, right. and then you're really increasing the number of recreational options out there. Talk about, let's talk about all of them. Let's talk about the trees. You, okay. I mean, you're planting trees with Bed Midler. I mean, you love this. <laughs> this is great. Plan YC was the mayor's 127-point plan to make a more sustainable city. By 2030. By 2030. We're growing, but we're growing by a million people, but we got to do things now up front. In the parks department, you have some of the early action items because you can't clean the air right away. You can't clean the water right, right. away. You got to get started. But we can plant trees right away. We can improve which cleans the right air. Away, which cleans the air. So uh, one of the key things to that, though, was we have some terrific people in the parks department, real tree advocates, mm -hmm. Fiona Watt, our chief of forestry, uh, our first deputy, Liam Kavanaugh, who've been building up this argument for many years. And they worked with the U.S. Forest Service. And what we found out was that for every dollar the city invests in a street tree, there's a $5.60 return. And that's calculated through looking at the stormwater diversion, mm -hmm. lowering the temperature, processing the pollution, raising real estate values. Yep, yep. You know the expression, a tree-lined street? Yep. That's the lead in every real estate ad. Yep. So there's, there's a, there is actual value to it. We presented our, that argument to City Hall, and they said, we agree with you, this is good. Plus, you're looking at the public health issues. We're looking at the neighborhoods with the high asthma rates and low tree canopy yep. cover and focusing and on And it's got to be a statistical correlation. Well, we're, we're working on that, yeah. but we, we there certainly seems to be a correlation. Right. So we're concentrating our early tree planting efforts in these what we call greening for breathing mm -hmm. neighborhoods where we're going to plant a lot of trees that we're, where there are very few right now. It's happening in East Harlem, South Bronx, Hunts Point, Morsania, in uh, Central Brooklyn, North Shore, Staten Island. But the, the goal is to completely fill up the, it's all the streets with trees. That's 220,000 trees. That's fully funded in uh -huh. the budget. Then to add about 300,000 trees in parks, reforest 2,000 acres, and then we need another 400,000 trees to be planted on private property. So you're talking about a million trees, a million and you're going to do this by when? Uh, within 10 years. Okay. But we're, we're off to a good start. We've planted over 60,000 trees since the mayor announced. Okay, I want to get to the to, to the end of the Bloomberg, at some point, the end of the Bloomberg administration, what happens to these plans. But let's talk about the the, the improvements. What large-scale parks improvements are you guys making? Well, it's, uh, as I said... I mean, you talked about yeah. Union Square, you talked about well, those, those, Washington those Square. Are, those, those are they're they're small, pretty much but done. expensive. Yeah, but yeah. what else? We're, we're building huge new parks. For example, Fresh Kills. The old dump is being turned into a park. Yeah, the last time we talked, yeah. we were talking about planning for yeah. where are we with Fresh Kills? Okay, we are. Where were you, Rev? We're about to start construction on two or three segments. These are the areas that did not have the uh, the garbage in them. So they're the, the flat areas where we're building parks and ball fields. We're just starting the Euler process right now. Uniform, uniform, uniform land, land use review. Go ahead, process. And the EIS, that's all getting started right now. Environmental impact statement. And doing the working drawings for how we build the first few phases. So we should be in good construction on a number of phases. What do you get Mary's sued office. on? Yeah, so far, no one's suing Okay, okay. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's a plus. What about, though, but, the fresh kills and the 9-11 remain? I mean, well, that, that's, that that's one of, there, there are, there, there are, there was stuff that was brought over from the World Trade Center, right. and it was combed through pretty well. Right. But there is a belief by some of the families that maybe some remains right. there. We're going to make a beautiful memorial there, okay. and it's really the best thing to do because if you, what are you going to cart it around to some other place? And, and one of the tops of one of the mountains is going to be a beautiful. You can't believe how beautiful it is up there. It's like an alpine meadow already without doing a thing. You get yeah. how many? What is it? Twenty two hundred acres. Twenty two hundred acres. It's huge. It's the size of Pelham Bay Park. It's which huge. Is the largest and park. it's going to be the highest point on the East Coast and instead of being garbage. Maybe the highest. Park, maybe it's highest man -made. man made. The okay. highest point is up in uh, Mount Desert in Maine. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fifteen hundred okay. feet. Okay. What else? Well, all across the city. Uh, the Bronx, I think, is there's probably more going on in the Bronx than any place. Else. Bronx has got a lot of park. I mean, I lived yeah. in the Bronx for four years. Bronx 20, has got twenty five percent parkland. Yeah. But we're the the combination of, of three things happening in the Bronx. One is the filtration plant project spun off $220 million worth of projects for, for parks in the Bronx, all across the Bronx. So we're spending $220 million there. The Yankee Stadium replacement parks, and then other investment that's that's going on, some of the mayor's plan YC projects, mm -hmm. rebuilding the high bridge, sure. rebuilding Soundview right. Park. Right. So we're spending $600 million in the Bronx alone, rebuilding old parks, building new parks. On the Bronx River, which was an open sewer for many years, We've got $70 million. And you canoed on the Bronx River. I just canoed on the Bronx River. It's great. Best. I like to say about canoeing in the Bronx River, it's the most fun you can have in New York without being arrested. It's so much fun. I don't know. Is that a failure of imagination? I don't know. Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take it the way it is. What else? What else is going on? 
Well, as, as part of part of Plan YC, in addition to the million trees, the mayor's goal is to have every New Yorker live within a 10-minute ten ten walk of the I park. I was going to ask that. Is that reasonable? It is, it is reasonable. Here's how we're doing it. First of all, one of the quick and easy ways we can do it is you have all these schoolyards, school playgrounds that are just used by the schools historically and not mm -hmm. open on the weekends. Sure. So and they're all cement. Yeah, 300 of them are going to be converted to full-time playgrounds. That is, the schools will have priority use during the day, and the weekends after school, summers, they'll be open as public playgrounds. Uh -huh. That's a 30% increase in playgrounds overnight. We're going to rebuild them, plant trees, make them greener. Excellent. We're going to add 800 green streets, you know, the things that Henry Stern started, right. those little right. traffic right. islands. Right, right, right. And then eight regional parks, parks that have never been fully developed, are going to be turned into fully developed parks, like... Uh, a park in the, right near Coney Island Creek that we call Calvert Blocks Park. It's just a big empty area. Right. It's going to be fully developed. I don't know it's it at all. It's a thirty-five yeah. million dollar project. The McCarran Pool, which has been closed for yeah, no, years, I know the Mc fifty million dollar project. Oh, that's that's going to reopen. reopen. Oh I yes, didn't realize that. Yep. Uh, same thing, you know, in the Bronx and Soundview Park. Uh, we're going to build the the best indoor track and field facility in the region in Staten Island, Ocean Breeze Park. Let's talk about the pool. You open the pool, this magnificent pool in. Flushing Meadow, Corona, Corona, Flushing Meadow Park, and I saw you swimming in the pool. You, you can't help yourself. You know, Talk about this pool and the recreational facility and the hockey rink and everything else in Queens. Well, this is the, um, again, it's one of these superlatives. This is the largest recreation facility ever to be built, built in a park, which is saying a lot because we're comparing it to sure. the WPA, those magnificent structures. Absolutely. It's a Olympic size indoor swimming pool, competition pool, it's got 50, it's a 50 meter pool. You could run the Olympic trials there. In fact, part of the impetus to build this was the 2012 effort. Okay. And that's what got the additional and money into it. And this is total community access? Total community access, it's just like one of our recreation center pools, it's a $75 annual membership to use it for adults, it's free for kids. Wow! And you can use that in any, any, any of our and you places. And you're building, or you're in the process of building a, an, an NHL size? The rink is there. Rink. It's there. It's there. We're just about to give it to a concessionaire to operate. So it's all in one building, the rink and the pool are in one large and, building. And also, the, it's the architecture of the building itself yeah. that's real, that really fits in sort of with the, it's, the landscape it's futuristic. of the it's right. got a, it's, it's a cable-stayed roof. It's got a gi two giant masts that come up in these cables that hold it up. Yeah, like it's a like bridge. a tent, right. And, yeah. and it also, it really fits the view. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, you've got the New York State Pavilion in its decrepitude, you know. Yeah, but there. you got a but view it of it. But it yeah. sort of highlights it. Yeah. What else? What else is going on? Well, we're opening new recreation centers. We're building a lot of new park buildings. Again, we were, for many years, we were in a period of retrenchment, and now we're in expansion mode, so we're Right across the street from the Flushing Meadows Pool is a new recreation center, which has you know, indoor uh, squash courts. I've never had a recreation center of squash courts before. I mean, I grew up, and we loved Forest yeah. Park, but I mean, squash courts? I yeah. mean, come on. Oh, speaking of uh, Forest Park, right near Forest Park in Alley Pond Park, we've built the... Uh, One of the parks I used to hang out in. The only major high wire challenge course in the country in a public park, where you can go do the zip lines, you know, walk on a tightrope, it's all, all right there in Alley Pond Park. Wow. You know, this, is kind of, this is the way to, you know, we, we can't just do the traditional recreation. Right. You know, give out a basketball at the rec center. Right. You know, that's, that's well, very nice. That's what we did with that's the That's very park 1950s. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, well, I mean, come on. Don't insult the 50s. That's okay. But, you know, the people, some kids want to do something oh, different. Oh, no, so, I understand. So now we have the skate parks. We opened the first two legal surfing beaches in the Rockaways. Two <sighs> mountain biking trails. This, this and you do all course. this stuff, right? As I, part I, of your I have job. to try it out. Oh, okay. I actually Just, surfed. I, I got on a surfboard. I stood up for about five seconds. <laughs> not bad for an old guy like yeah. you. Where are you headed? What's 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 facing you? Particularly, you talk about this big capital budget, yeah. the investment, the operating budget, economic downturn, recession. What happened? Aren't you in danger? I mean, traditionally, Parks was one of those places, along with libraries and culturals, that got cut. Is, well, all of this, is all of this in, I hate to say, in concrete or in turf or whatever well, you know, the metaphor it, is? You can never say never because the budget has to be adopted each year. Right. You can't. But so far it's intact. The mayor has kept his promise to not cut the parks disproportionately. Right. We, everybody took a little bit of cut in this right. year's budget, next year's budget. But ours is, is relatively uh, minor. We can absorb it. And the mayor gave us a lot of extra money. For the first time, they didn't just give us capital dollars and say have a bake sale to maintain right. it. 
lots of extra staff to maintain the new yeah, yeah I mean you increase staff you increase yeah. your operating budget so that yes. but again that's out there and also you you've got a different mayor in 2000 well here's the, and that's, that's the different. key that's the key isn't it and this is where the advocates and the citizens really need to step up if they think if they agree that parks are important they want to make sure that the next mayor because we're gonna have as you know this big transition right Huge in the city, the city council, council the for borough the, the city wise, yeah, yeah. the borough president. The it's a big turnover. Just you know, making sure that they care about parks too and that they're not going to you know, let things go back to the way they were. Okay, let's talk legacy. I mean, you've been there, what, six and a half years, close? Six and a half years, but and, really close to, on and off, close to 30 yeah, years. Yeah, and then you've got a year and a half more yeah. as commissioner. What's, do your parks commission a legacy? What's the one sentence you want to, you know, you want under your picture and, you know, the arsenal. What, what, is, what does it say about Adrian Bennett? I, I, if I think if, if there's any one area I've focused on, it's doing things for kids, making sure that you've got great playgrounds, good sports facilities, great uh, sports fields for kids to play on so parents will form little leagues. You know, in the old days, parents, when they had kids, if they had the means, would move to the suburbs. Sure. Now they're staying here. We and played in lots, yes. park lots. I didn't play little. There was no West Side no, Little League. No, we, when I was we didn't up. have a little league. Yeah. We played in the park. We yeah. played in Forest Park or Highland Park. So, so now there's park tens of thousands of kids in the little leagues because the parents say sure. we don't want to move to New Rochelle. Right. We want to stay here. Right. Okay. So get, great things for kids. And I, I think if anything, you know, the city is much greener and more flowers. And okay. The, the, the park system is in the best shape it's been. Again, building on this legacy that other commissioners before me have have led us to. It's been 25 years of improvement. And I think the, the one of the keys has been the public-private partnerships. You know, some Which people, are also, in a sense, the source of the conflict that we've talked you know, about earlier. But people, people say, oh, you're privatizing. Well, let's remember, who is this public-private partnership? It's not some corporation right. who's coming in. Right. These are New York citizens okay. who are taking their spare time to help parks and raise money for parks. It's $100 million a year they help contribute to parks. we got 10 seconds, and I can't help it because you're a movie lunatic. Best movie you've seen in the last two years? Uh, no Country for Old Men, Ooh. hands down. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Very good. We need we need to talk off camera about movies. Right. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.